This program has been made by the friends and partners of Jennifer LeClaire Ministries. We hope you enjoy today's teaching. How many of you have sensed demonic resistance to your prayers at times? Amen. Even if you don't sense it, it's happening. It's happening. I, I've told you before, I've never one time had the enemy roll out the red carpet and say, here, let me help you to the breakthrough. Let me help you to bind me. Bill Hamill was down here a couple of years ago, and when he visited, he said this. He said, Awakening House of Prayer is a spiritual warfare outpost in South Florida. That's pretty good, amen? That means we have a responsibility, not just for these four walls, but we have a responsibility for the region because many churches don't know how to fight. Many churches love Jesus, and they and that's wonderful. They need to soak. They need to do what they're doing. There's a place for every kind of church in this region. Not every church is supposed to be a warfare outpost. So we take this seriously. But God said through Bishop Hammond that we needed to learn how to cooperate with angels at a higher level, at a higher degree. Amen. And that's what we're talking about this afternoon. If you're a watchman, you must learn how to cooperate with the ministry of angels. Even if you're not a watchman, you still must learn these spiritual dynamics because you can't go toe to toe with the devil himself. In the name of Jesus, you have authority, but you need some backup. Amen. Even Jesus, when Jesus comes back, when he cracks open the sky at his second coming, he's coming back with the angel armies. Amen. He's chosen to allow the angels to take part in his victory. Amen. Why? Because they're ministering spirits sent to minister to the heirs of salvation. They're helping us now. And they even minister to Jesus when he was on the earth twice. So we're going to talk about this today because here's the thing. Watchmen have to pray. Yes or no? Because the Bible says watch and pray, right? Watch and pray. Let me just tell you something. Every time you release a prayer out of your mouth, there's a war in the heavens. I said the enemy is resisting your prayer from reaching the throne room. He wants to block and tackle in the spirit. He's, he's, he's trying to interfere. He's trying to, to, to kind of like make an intercept, you know, watch football. You know how they intercept the ball? I don't, I don't know what you call it because I don't watch football. They intercept it, right? They intercept it and they run the opposite. That's what these de demons, these principalities are trying to do. They're trying to intercept your prayer to delay it from reaching the throne room. It's called a bronze heaven, what the Bible calls a brass heaven. It's when you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling and falling back down to the ground. But the enemy also tries to keep your prayer answers from coming from the throne room down. So there's this resistance on both sides of the equation. The enemy tries to keep you from praying in the first place. If he can't stop you from praying, he'll try to keep you from believing your prayers are ascending. If he can't get you out of faith, he'll wrestle with angels in, in, the, in the heavenly places to keep your prayers from ascending and keep your answers from descending. But today, we're going to learn how to work with angels, why we should, and how to partner with them. Them to see God's will done in the earth as it is in heaven. Are you happy about that? Yeah. Amen. So, Father, thank you in the name of Jesus that you give us ears to hear today in Jesus' name, that you help us understand that the demonic resistance will not just merely go away on its own, but we must take authority over it, and sometimes we need angelic assistance. And thank you, Lord, today that you help us to grab a hold of this. Let it change the dynamics of our warfare and our prayer life for the better in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So principalities and powers are going to resist the watchman's prayers, right? If the enemy can't keep you from watching, he'll try to keep you from praying. If he can't keep you from praying, he'll try to keep you from persevering in prayer. He just wants you not to stand on your post. But the devil is a liar and I don't take orders from him. I take orders from the king of kings, the Lord of lords, amen, the bright and morning star. So God gets glory when your spirit-inspired prayers are answered because his will comes to earth as it is in heaven. And one day in the millennial kingdom, that thousand year reign after Christ comes back, it will be like heaven on earth. We will see it, his will done on earth as it is in heaven. I can't wait. That's going to be fun. Amen. 
That's going to be fun. The devil's going to be in chains for a thousand years. That's going to be a good time. Amen. That's going to be a great time. Amen. It's going to be good. How many of you have sensed demonic resistance to your prayers at times? Amen. Even if you don't sense it, it's happening. It's happening. I, I've told you before, I've never one time had the enemy roll out the red carpet and say, here, let me help you to the breakthrough. Let me help you to bind me. No, he resists us at every turn, at every point. That is what he does. He's a resister. We have to resist him more than he's resisting us because he's resisting us. And many times spiritual warfare is just outlasting the devil. After Chuck Pierce prophesied a new watchman movement, we saw a new generation of watchmen arising. Now they need to get equipped. If you want to understand the times and seasons, if, if you're tired of getting blindsided by the enemy, if Jesus' words watch and pray inspire you, this is for you. While many people reject watchmen, God is putting a spotlight on this critical ministry of both warning and hope. I'm sharing scriptural revelation and practical experience over two decades of standing in the office of a watchman in the nations. You will learn how to operate in this ministry to see what the enemy is doing and announce the coming of the king. You're gonna learn the critical role of the watchman, how to discern if you're being called as a watchman, protocols for releasing words of warning paired with words of hope, practical prayers, exercises, and activations for operating as a watchman, and so much more. Pick up your copy of The Making of a Watchman by Jennifer LeClaire today. And so, so I have good news for you today, praise God. Only one-third of the angels are on Satan's side. I know sometimes it feels like the hordes of hell are against you, and maybe they are. But only one-third of the demon powers who were cast out of heaven are working for Satan. Two-thirds are on our side. Isn't that good news? Two-thirds are fighting for us. And I'm not even sure that God didn't create more angels because he is still Elohim. He is still creator God. And if he needed more angels because our population of the world increased, he'll make more. Amen. He'll make as many as he needs to help his his, his bride succeed because they are ministering spirits sent to minister to the heirs of salvation how many of you are heirs of salvation good most of you some of you need to get saved this afternoon we can take care of that confess with your mouth believe in your heart so let's talk about the watchman angel alliance we're in the walking in the watchman anointing series so angels are spirit beings. I just read the scripture to you, Hebrews 1 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to minister to those who will inherit salvation? Now look at this. Demons minister against the heirs of salvation. Demons come according to Jesus in John 10 10. They come, but for to steal, kill, and destroy. That is why they come. So demons minister against the heirs of salvation, but angels work for you. So you really can't lose if you follow Jesus. You really can't lose. The Bible says he always leads us into triumph in Christ Jesus. So the key is to follow him. And if you follow him, he will tell you when to begin to work with the angels. They're not always necessary in every battle. Now, I don't want you to get off in a ditch. Sometimes you hear a truth. Sometimes you hear a teaching. And then you try to apply that to every area of your life. And it doesn't fit every area of your life. Not every battle you fight will you need, uh, you know, Michael the archangel to come to your rescue like Daniel did. So if you could pull back the curtain on the spirit realms, you would see an epic war going on. I mean, literally, you would see angels and demons probably all over, especially in Walmart. Amen. The Walmart, I can't go there anymore. I can't go there anymore because there's, look, people manifest all over the Jesus, they have a set. People rip it. Ah, I, no. It's too stressful. I used to go to Walmart with my daughter, and every time we went in there, I would get so stressed out, and I didn't understand what was going on. And finally, I realized it was all the demonized people. The spiritual climate is not good. So let's talk about, first of all, the benefits of working with angels. There are benefits to working with angels. You need to understand why you need to do something many times in order to do it.
You need to know what, how does it advantage you? And I want you to remember this because there are great advantages. I mean, when you hear these things, you should go, wow, I never thought of that before. Maybe you have thought of it before. Maybe it's a reminder and that's okay too. But sometimes, you know, Paul and Peter both said in scripture, I don't mind to put you in remembrance of what I already said. Because why? Because it goes in one ear sometimes and out the other. When we get in a fierce battle, sometimes the skills we learned in the last season, all of a sudden we forget what we learned. Does that ever happen to you? You tell somebody else what to do, here comes the devil knocking on your door, and you're like, ah! So here's the thing. With prayer and spiritual warfare, we need the ministry of angels. There are benefits. I love this one. Angels don't need rest. They don't have to sleep. Isn't that cool? I wish I didn't have sleep. I tried it once. I didn't make it past a day. You know, when I was younger... You know, I used to, when I was in college, I worked full time with school full time. And I could literally stay up all night, go to work, go to school, go out to a party, come home, sleep an hour and do it. Listen, I don't know what happened to me. Shabbat shekete. At Jennifer LeClaire Ministries, our heart is to sow into the lives of people who may never otherwise hear the gospel of Christ or break out of bondage. Although we've traveled to dozens of nations in strategic missions to evangelize and equip believers, there's more work to do than we can possibly get done by ourselves. That's why JLM is partnering with ministries around the world to help them do what they do best. We're partnering with ministries in India that are transforming the lives of people with leprosy. Ministries in Africa that are bringing clean water to the masses. Global ministries taking the hope of the gospel to the ends of the earth. Messiah-centered ministries in Israel that are doing the work of Christ in the Middle East. Ministries that provide a hand of hope to hurting people in America's inner cities and the nations. When you sow into JLM, you are sowing into the work of God in the nations. Together, we're better. Will you partner with us to take the gospel to the ends of the earth, to feed hungry people, to bring hope to the addicted, and more? You can sow a seed today at jenniferleclair.org slash missions. Thank you for your partnership.